Today we're going to be taking a look at this, the Jumper T-Lite version 2. Now this is their latest version which has Express LRS built in. Jumper have sent this over to me for free to have a look at and what I'm going to do in this video is give you my thoughts on it, give you an overview, we'll tear it down and have a bit of a closer look as well. Now I have to say I've been looking at a lot of the smaller radios over the last couple of months on the channel and in one way or another they are all compromised but it is interesting to see the differences between them and what's really interesting about this radio is its price point. It is one of the cheapest of all of them that I have seen that is also fully featured as well and it costs somewhere between $70 and $85 putting it in the lower end of the pricing of all of them. So let's take a look at what you're actually getting for that money and see what it's actually like. Okay, so to jump into the T-Lite version 2. Now, when you get it, it comes in this little nice box. My kids have already told me they want this box after I've made this video. It's covered in little spaceships, and my daughter saw this and wanted it instantly. I had to prize it back off here before I actually finished making this video. Now, when you open the lid, the first thing you'll find is this nice little page worth of stickers. Nice to see and you get an instruction leaflet. Now, I really like this because you don't often get instruction leaflets in stuff you buy these days. You've got the Jumper T-Lite Quick Start Guide, showing you all the buttons and functions on this side there, giving you an overview of the main screen, and then just some extra information in there too. Nothing fantastic, but it is still nice to see a bit of paper with some instructions on in this day and age. Then below, we get the radio, which comes held in place with that little plastic cover. That then pulls out and then you can see under this you get this little plastic box for holding your 18650 batteries which they do not include with the radio I may add. You get the antenna and a USB-C cable. Now this version of the radio they've sent me here is the Express LRS edition. So this one has that 150 milliwatt Express LRS module built in as standard, but this radio does have an option for extending with a nano bay on the back as well. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. Jumping in closer to the radio. Now the first thing you're gonna to need to do is mount your antenna. This is a standard SMA connector. You do need to make sure that this is screwed on before or you power the radio up, otherwise you could damage the internal module. Now it is available with multiple different modules, but as I've already said, the one I've got here is the Express LRS edition, which supports a power output of up to 150 milliwatts, but you can also attach an external nano module if you want to, and we'll look at that a little bit in a minute. Giving you a, just a quick overview of the spec of the radio itself. So we have a Edge TX based radio, which has that Express LRS module built in. It has two Hall effect gimbals with adjustable sticks. There are no accessories needed. You can actually adjust the stick length on these nice and easily. And you can then just extend them up without having to buy an accessory like you do on some other radios. It has trim buttons built in as standard as well. So you can see an up a down and a side and side for each of the channels. We have our menu options up here for the Edge TX system, as well as a 1.3 inch LCD screen for looking at our settings. And we'll show that in a moment. If we move to the top, we have two two position switches at the back, two three position switches at the top. We have a USB-C port for updating the firmware and charging the battery. We have a micro SD card slot our trainer port, as well then as our antenna connector in the center. There are no additional buttons on the back of this radio, but what you do have on the back is this little bay cover here, and that is for the battery. Now, they don't include a battery as standard with this radio, but it does take a standard 18650, just one of them, but you do need to make sure it's the right type. It doesn't like the flat top ones like I've got here. I ended up actually having to bend the pins out a little bit to allow it to fit, but it is just a single battery that you will need. But as I did mention, they don't include it as standard. Now, it's clear to see that this is a game style controller. And one thing you will notice is that there is no lanyard hoop on the front of this radio at all. Whilst that doesn't mean you couldn't find a way of attaching one, it is a bit of a shame in my opinion that there isn't anything there to allow you to actually hook it on. I personally always like a radio on a strap whenever I'm using one. 
Now, just to give you an idea of how the gimbals feel on this radio, I have actually spent a bit of time having a play with them, and I have to say, they are actually quite solid. There is a little bit of flex in them, pushing them up and down into the corners, but it isn't a massive amount. It certainly isn't the same amount as you would get in something like a CNC gimbal, but it is very good. They are certainly not the worst gimbals I have ever felt on a radio. I wouldn't go as far as to say they are the best, but they feel absolutely fine. They feel nice and smooth. There's actually quite a nice amount of tension on them as well. One of the complaints I have seen against some of the smaller radios is they don't particularly have a good amount of tension on them. Whereas on this one, there is a nice amount there as standard. The throttle feels nice and smooth and there's a good amount of attention on the Yaw 2. Although something you will notice is that there's no adjustments around the side here and there's no adjustments on the back either. So if you want to adjust these, you're going to have to take the back cover off and that is something we will do in a minute. Now to power the radio on, you simply press and hold this large button here in the center and you can then see the little LED in the middle powers up. Now, it looks and feels exactly like any Edge TX radio at this point. We have our main screen, we have our enter, return, up and down buttons, and then we have our system and model, which also act as our page buttons too. So for instance, if I wanted to go into the Express LRS configuration, I could go down into there, into tools, hit enter, and you can do all the configuration for your built-in Express LRS module here as standard. Now there is just something I want to mention on Express LRS right here with this radio right now, and that is it comes with Express LRS 3.0 installed as standard. There isn't an official version 2 build for this radio, but you can flash it with a version 2 development build, allowing you to use it with your version 2 system if you want to, and that's what I've actually done here right now. But when you do get this, it will come with that version 3 Express LRS system built in as standard. Other than that, from an Edge TX point of view, it is pretty much the same as every other Edge TX OpenTX based radio. As I did say earlier, you also have your trim buttons down here, so they act exactly the same as you would expect, allowing you just to press them up and down for each of the axis. And you do have a little speaker down here that provides the volume output. I will say the sound actually is quite good from this speaker. It isn't too bad at all. It's not particularly loud, but it isn't particularly quiet and it's not really muffled. It's a nice clear sound. Again, I've heard worse from radios, but I've also heard better as well. Really, I've got no complaints from the sound you get from the speaker. Next, what we'll do is pop the back cover off and just take a look at how it's built and then give you an overview of how it is to adjust these gimbals. Okay, so I've got all the screws out. So it's now time to pop the back cover off and it looks like we have a little board at the back which goes to our battery bay it looks like some form of voltage regulator with these two harnesses that are going down to the main board at the front there so I think what we'll do is just carefully give them a tug and get them off out of the way there we go and then that frees us up for taking a look inside the radio itself now, you can clearly see the Express LRS module here mounted in the middle. You can see that there's a antenna cable that goes down there to the bottom of the board. And it does look like it's on jumpers, actually. So it does look like it will lift out. Or oh, actually, the antenna cable, if we lift the sticker, the antenna cable goes all the way around the board and back up there, actually. And that is this AI on... Express LRS board and you can see there the little Wi-Fi antenna for it located there next to the ESP32. You can then see on either side the gimbals for the radio so you've got the Hall effect on each side and then you can now easily see the adjustments that are available for them as well. So we've got our spring tension adjustments there and there for that stick and then we've also got our slider adjustment here in our bar if we wanted to put more tension on the throttle. However, as I did say earlier, none of these are accessible from the back of the radio. You do actually have to lift the cover off to do it. We can then see our switches that are placed in plastic, which looks quite nice. And then you can see the USB-C port and then the other switches all there. Overall, everything looks nice and tidy. You've got the speaker down there. And then we've got our main board underneath with our Express LRS module. I think this will probably just lift out. Oh, there we go. Nice and easily. We can then see the main board for the radio. So we've got our CR 
1220 battery. And then we've got the main CPU, which is a CKS32F407, which looks to be the case. We've got a little vibration motor located down there too. Now, just like I mentioned on the other radio I looked at a couple of weeks ago, it does look like they're using these very thin wires again on the gimbals. They do look like they're held in place nicely on the hall sensors on each side. You can see they're going over the top out of the way just I do wonder how these are going to cope over time but there's no real evidence that I've seen yet that we will see failures from these kind of very thin wires just hopping in a little bit closer you can now see the gimbals a bit better and you can actually see these look fairly easy to swap out we've got four screws one in each corner which would allow us to just lift that out and they're on little connectors here and here so you would be able to replace them if you wanted to as well overall the internal build quality looks fairly decent i've got no complaints on that at all but the only thing i always throw caution at is these very thin wires on the gimbals when i see them but everything does look like it's glued down nicely you've got the sensors on top too so hopefully that shouldn't offer any problems just quickly showing you this board on the back cover this appears to be some form of voltage regulator but it also has the connector on for attaching the external module as well. Under this sticker here, if I just lift it up, you can see that there is a connector in place there. And they do have a module kit that you can screw onto the back of the radio that attaches to that, allowing you to install an external module if you want to. So if you were to be having power problems with this radio, that would probably be the first place I'd have a look. Just taking a look at the T Lite version 2 up against some of its main rivals. We have the Commando 8 from iFlight and we have the Radio Master Zorro. Now, all three of these radios are based on Edge TX, all three of these radios have Express LRS, and all three of these radios come with Hall Effect gimbals as standard. But that really is where the similarities end. These two are more game style remote radios whereas the Zorro whilst is a game style controller it is a much bigger radio overall but it really is a much more featured radio and I always class the Zorro more as a baby full-size radio than maybe a game style controller radio. The difference between these with regards to the Express LRS is worth taking into account as well because the T-Lite Version 2's radio can do up to 150 milliwatts as I mentioned earlier. The Zorro can do up to 250 milliwatts but the Commando 8 can do up to 500 milliwatts. So there is a big difference there. But there is differences when it comes to using external modules. You can put an external bay on both of these. However, if you do it on the Commando 8, you actually have to remove the internal module, whereas it doesn't appear to be the case on this one that you do that. You can retain the internal module, but this has the bay on the back as standard and you can retain the internal module as well. There is some other little differences, as I mentioned earlier. For instance, you can adjust the stick length on the T-Lite, but you can't on the Commando 8 because they are fixed length. You don't, though, have a lanyard hoop on the T-Lite, but you do have on the Commando 8. You do have trim functions on the T-Lite, but you don't have trim functions on the front on the Commando 8. So there are little differences that you do need to take into account. One last thing to discuss on these radios whilst they're next to each other is their batteries, their power consumption, and the battery life. Now there is a stark difference between all of that with these radios. The Commando 8 has a built-in rechargeable battery of 4,000 milliamp hour off the top of my head. That offers fantastic battery life on that radio. I failed to flatten it in my review tests on it. I don't actually have current consumption for that one because it is built in and I couldn't get the radio apart, but the battery life on it is as good as it needs to be. On the flip side of that, we then have the Radio Master Zorro, and this is fairly compromised from a power point of view. It does have replaceable batteries, but they are 18350s, unusual size cells, and the battery life on this radio is pretty poor. Its current consumption at 100 milliwatts on Express LRS is about 430 milliamp. At a full output, it's nearly 500 milliamp, and that gives around two hours of use on this radio. However, 
the new T-Lite Vision 2 from Jumper does offer much better performance than that. Whilst it only takes a single 18650, its current draw is about 240 milliamp in my tests at 100 milliwatts output. That means it's going to give you in excess of 10 hours battery life from this radio, and it puts it in a similar category to the Commando 8. So whilst the Zorro is a much bigger radio, you would hope that might result in longer life. The reality is, unfortunately, it is compromised not only by its cells, but the amount of current it draws, and these two offer much better results in this area. Now, the real benefit of these two, obviously, is that you can also change the cells as well. All three of these batteries can be charged via USB-C, so that's not a problem. You can do that in the field, and the Zorro will allow you to attach an external battery as well. But the real benefit of these two is you can take extra cells with you, but to be honest, you'll probably not flatten that one anyway, so you've not got to worry about it. Now, there is just something I need to talk about on the power output of this radio. I have said in this review that its output is 150 milliwatts, and that is the specification provided by Jumper. However, that isn't what you're going to get whilst using Express LRS, and that is because they don't have a 150 milliwatt option. Express LRS has various output modes, and they jump from 100 to 250. There is no 150 milliwatt step in the Express LRS system. I know the guys over there have been doing some tests and they have seen a maximum output on this radio of about 130 milliwatts. However, what they have done in their firmware is now configured the radio to output 100 milliwatts on the 100 milliwatt setting. So you're not getting that up to 150 milliwatts that Jumper have said. They are not going to be adding in arbitrary steps between their existing steps in the RF outputs because the problem is doing that, you're going to have every other manufacturer come up with random outputs. Next minute, we'll see things like 270, 330. So they are sticking with their various steps that they have, which is in this situation, 100 or 250. There will be, though, a way, as I understand it, in the version 3 of Express LRS to allow you to force it into the maximum output if you want to. I don't know what that is today, and I'll probably cover that in a future video. But I did just want to explain to you why, if you buy this radio, you're only going to see a 100 milliwatt option on the display, and that's what you're going to get out of the RF. Okay, so to share with you my thoughts on the Jumper T-Lite version 2. Now, I have to say, I really like this radio, and I think it is one of the best gamepad-style controllers out there. It has built-in Express LRS, removable battery, trim controls, Hall Effect gimbals, the plastics feel decent, the switches feel okay, the build quality is good. Literally, the only complaint I have on this radio is the fact that it doesn't have a neck strap or a lanyard hoop. It is interesting when I've spent some time looking at all of these little radios that they all are compromised in one way or another, whether they have limited switches or functions, poor battery life or limited controls. They all have a compromise, but I do think this has the least of all of them. And if you're looking to get a game style controller, this one is probably worth a look. That is pretty much everything that I can say on this radio because I have no complaints about it other than that neck strap. I want to thank Jumper RC for sending it over. As I mentioned earlier, they have sent it to me for free to make this video. However, they haven't seen it before it's been published and they've had no influence in the content either. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who supports the channel via Patreon and buy me a coffee as well. I would not be able to make independent content like this without your support. If you'd like to support us to allow us to keep doing that, there is a link in the description to Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. It's only by you guys using them am I able to keep making the content. I am also really interested in what you think about this radio as well, so please do let me know in the comment section. If you've got any questions, put them in there as well, and I will try and answer them. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.